Hello sunshines. So this is going to be one of those ever popular on YouTube kind of witchy haul or witchy shopping type videos. Um, I did mention in my uh, paying for spirituality, shopping for spirituality video a while ago that even though pagans and witches tend to feel that the most powerful tool we have in our spiritual journey is our mind and we don't really need anything like that, not like outside of our mind and our consciousness, we are magpies, we like shiny things, it's nothing to be ashamed of. And I've bought some shiny things lately from the interwebs and I would like to show you guys. Um, and I will say just before I begin, I might look like I've got like a crocodile tooth coming out of my head, but it is actually a, a real, like an oriental lily. Um, it's not an alien or anything. <laughs> um, normally when my flowers are seeing their last days, I tend to locate one of the survivors in the bunch and snip it off and put it in my hair as a way to kind of salvage the last vestiges of life out of a bouquet. And actually these lilies were bought for me as a present for the run up to Samhain by my lovely boyfriend who knows that they're like my favourite and of course they tap into a lot of the Samhain themes quite nicely. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a lily. Okay, so I got an amazing package yesterday from Crystal Age website and um, it's a little little chakra pouch thing and I've wanted it for a few months but I didn't feel I could justify the expense and then last, or oh, the other day I decided that I was just done with wanting it and had to actually buy it, so I did. And it's basically, it just comes in this little pouch that folds out and then it's got like little pockets inside it for gems which is really awesome and it comes with the full set and obviously because it's like a chakra healing set the stones are selected to focus on chakra healing, chakra cleansing, working with chakras, journeying through the chakras and that kind of thing but I'm not just going to be using it for that, um, I actually just like the package in itself, I like the fact that I could swap and change the crystals around like if I'm travelling somewhere or whatever, I could put other pieces that I have in, I mean like there's a piece of jet, piece of amber and a piece of jade that I quite regularly if I'm going away somewhere will um, remember to pop in my bag so sometimes I think I'll change these stones up and I'll use them for different things as well, like it's been a long time since I worked with hematite for example and I don't have a piece at the moment, so I think I'm just going to use these to get myself into a few stones that I haven't really um, said hello to in a while. So we've got some clear quartz, some rose quartz, some amethyst, uh, yellow calcite, sodalite, green aventurine, jasper, the hematite, the carnelian. On the bottom we've got blue quartz, um, a little tumbled citrine and the, uh, the clear quartz point as well in there. So it's like a really cool working set that comes all together and I just really love it. And um, a few stones in there I feel already really bonded and really connected with anyway. Like amethyst is my all time favourite gemstone. When I was a little kid I went to the, um, the Natural History Museum and somebody bought me a big amethyst cluster. I'm talking like a great big thing, you know, that could barely fit in my hand as a child. And I was mesmerised by this amethyst cluster. I would just gaze into it for ages. It was my favourite object for a long time. I used to have it by my bed. Um, I just used to lose myself in it. I think without knowing what I was doing, I was actually doing trance work with it. And God knows where that piece of amethyst went, you know. I mean, it, it's all a blur, isn't it? A lot of your childhood. So I'm not sure if it was given away or if I sold it on or if I gave it away or what. But um, I really, really miss it. It just fits so perfectly in my hand as well. I know a lot of people that are into crystals tend to say things like that. Oh, it fits perfectly in my hand. And it sounds so weird and shallow, but... I totally get what they mean by that, so yeah, amethyst is a, a crystal that I've worked with for a long, long time, and jasper, I also just have a really good feeling about jasper, always have, I love it, I think it's very earthly, I think if we're talking about the four elements as ways of describing areas of our spirituality or areas of the self, then I think jasper is classically earthy, it really taps into the five senses, it makes me feel joyous and sensual and like I just want to be part of everything, and it just gives me a drive and an energy I kind of feel is very happy hands-on and very extroverted and very red-blooded, very warm, very rich stone. So yeah, really, really love the Jasper. So I'm looking forward to working with these and I just love that set. While I was having a look at that set and choosing to buy that set, noting that there was some yellow calcite in there, I decided also to pick up a few other pieces of calcite. Calcite is a stone I've worked with before and I find it very energising and I think it's got kind of like this a salty kind of feel to it, almost as though it's um, it's purifying and cleansing and stripping everything away so it's down to the bare basics, uh, psychically speaking. So I picked up a blue piece and a green piece. 
The blue piece is quite milky and I've noticed that with a lot of photographs of blue calcite that it looks like this it's got this milky translucent look all over it almost as though it's in some kind of amniotic sac and the true colour is like hidden away which I really quite like and also I don't know if you can see but there's this big red laceration going through a little bit of it as well which I thought was quite intense. The green calcite, who doesn't love green calcite and this piece is amazing, I've got a feeling already that it's going to be quite a good companion stone, um, it just fits in my hand perfectly any which way and it's just lovely and, and cold and feels gorgeous um, and looks just so edible as well. I think that this stone really helps me to de-stress and also blue calcite as well. I think if you've got a Celtic temperament like I have and you tend to maybe get stressed at the tiniest little thing, really kind of douses you. <laughs> Feels like a cold shower. <laughs> um, I bought a piece of tourmaline as well, a tiny piece of tourmaline because I haven't worked with tourmaline for a long time. And it used to be when I was younger and I was first experimenting with witchcraft, a very important stone to me. The big three, in fact, were all dark stones, tourmaline, jet and snowflake obsidian. They were my big three and I worked with them a lot. And so I have, but I haven't really touched tourmaline in a long time. And I like the protective energy that it gives off and that kind of thing. So I'm really looking forward to working with it a little bit and going down memory lane there. While I'm on the subject of stuff I've bought, I know this was a bit of a rock fest, but I'm just going to talk through very quickly three books that I bought recently as well, which I will be reviewing for the channel. The first one is Standing in the Light, My Life as a Pantheist by Shannon Russell. And that's going to be amazing, I think. I'm really excited about it. The reviews do state that it's quite a personal journey. She doesn't just go into the academics of, like, Spinoza's God and that kind of thing. She is also talking about her personal journey with pantheism and her struggles in life as well. So I think that's going to be amazing. And just even some of the names of the chapters are making me salivate, so I can't wait to get into that. The Hollow Bone, A Field Guide to Shamanism by Colleen Dietzman. I think that's going to be really beautiful as well. And I have a couple of other books on shamanism that are much bigger um, and uh, more epic, but talk about it from a much more anthropological perspective. So people that are maybe anthropologists or psychologists or explorers that go and live with the shamans. So it's almost a very outside point of view, whereas I think that one's going to be a little bit more personal and affectionate. Uh, I get that from the tone of the book. And Nocturnal Witchcraft, Magic After Dark by Konstantinos, which is just going to ease me in gently to some of the themes I was exploring when I kind of went on my last spiritual slump with witchcraft. And this book will tie in perfectly with the project that I discussed in the My Kind of Magic video. It's just going to feed into that and help me to explore a few ideas and areas that I, I haven't gone back to for a while that I like, I want to think about, so... So thank you for having a look at my witchy haul and thank you all for posting so many of yours because, you know, I like seeing what people spend their money on and that's what I've just spent a bit of mine on. So have a good evening and thank you for watching.